Hey guys, it's Parker Destin here. I'm your Get the Coast legal and political correspondent. I have traded out my suit and left the studio today. We're in Destin right now at a local fish house, and we are going to be discussing uh, what the state of Florida and Okaloosa County are doing to eradicate lionfish from our local waters. Now, the best thing to know about an enemy is how, what makes it tick, and so we're going to take you in-depth today to take a look at some real lionfish that were harvested yesterday, and to help us understand exactly what we're up against, we've got uh, marine biologist Alex Fogg, who is also the Okaloosa County Coastal Resource Manager, and Alex, tell us a little bit about what we're facing and what exactly is lionfish how did they get here okay well first of all lionfish are bad but how bad are they um, there's been a lot of studies done over the last uh, 10 to 15 years when lionfish really started showing up in force these fish were harvested yesterday they're really fresh we started digging into their stomachs to find a bunch of different critters this time of year they aren't eating as much as maybe they are in the summertime when there's a lot more fish present and the water's a little bit warmer I can that the water was not warm yesterday <laughs> So today when we went out, we found, uh, or when, I, when we started uh, cutting up the lionfish, we found a number of different species. We found some tom tate, some pinfish. Um, we found some wrasse species, some sea bass, which is actually something that folks actually go out and try and target um, to bring home to eat. Um, a bunch of gobies and blennies, which are small little cryptic critters that you find on the reef. Um, also some purple reef fish, which, you, which are very common on our natural reefs here off uh, Okaloosa County. So Alex, for our viewers out there, lionfish are bad because they're they're not necessarily eating groupers and snappers, mm -hmm. in particular adults. They're not fighting with them and taking their space. Mm -hmm. What they're doing is they're out competing them for their food. Absolutely. So, you know, a lot of folks think that if lionfish are there, you're going to see a complete collapse, collapse of the system. We haven't really seen that. They're absolutely having an impact on the native species, but to what level? Again, there's been a lot of studies that have been done. You can go out to pretty much any reef in the Gulf of Mexico and find lionfish. We used to see a whole bunch. Now there aren't as many, but they're, they're absolutely having an impact on the native species, whether it be them preying directly on the same fish that our groupers and snappers are eating, or preying on those small fry before they get big enough to, to I guess, escape. So Alex, before we started, you were telling me that these fish are actually escapees from a, the aquarium trade, and they ended up getting spilt into some of the waterways in South Florida, and then they've used the currents to spread. Mm -hmm. And because they're not from the Gulf of Mexico, they have something that's a little bit unique to uh, the Gulf of Mexico now because this fish is venomous? Yes, they are. They are venomous, not poisonous. Poisonous means that you don't want to eat them. And in a minute, we're going to be talking about how many different ways you can actually prepare these things and how good they are. But with them being venomous and with these, these red stripes, it really deters a lot of predators from eating them. There are things that do eat them, but it's in not enough numbers to actually keep them under control or really keep them in balance. Interesting. So these were originally uh, from the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Yep. And so tell me a little bit more about the venom. How does that exactly work? Is it like a rattlesnake or how does it actually get into, uh, if you get stuck by one, how does it actually hurt you? So the, the venom is a little bit different than how it's delivered in lionfish compared to a snake or maybe even a spider. So lionfish don't have a, a hollow spine with a gland that injects venom when it stings you. It actually has um, uh, venom in small grooves that run the length of the spine and as you get stuck by the lionfish, there's a little membrane or a piece of skin that, that covers that spine. It gets depressed and exposes that, that tissue or that venomous tissue to your body. And that's what ends up giving you the, the pain and the swelling that most people are accustomed to when you get stung by lionfish. That's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So because they don't have a poisonous variant, if you just remove these spines, then you can just clean these things like a normal grouper or snapper and then you can eat the fish just in the same way that we eat a filet of grouper or a, a fried snapper sandwich in one of our local restaurants, right? Exactly. So you can, you can filet lionfish like any other species of fish, but if you aren't careful and do get stung, it's not a fun experience. So it, it is sometimes smart to go ahead and cut those spines off or at least cut the tips off to where they can't actually sting you. Um, if you do get stung, it is painful, but it's not going to kill you. Uh, you apply heat. It's a protein-based venom that can be denatured with heat. Fascinating. So if we have some, some folks who are interested in trying to say, how can I help? How can we get these out of our local waters? You had told me that spear fishermen, scuba diving, and mm -hmm. mechanical removal is basically the only viable way yep. to get rid of them. So what steps are Okaloosa County and the state of Florida doing to try to remove these from our local waters? So Okaloosa County and Destin Fort Walton Beach are working very closely with the state of Florida, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, um, on a number of different initiatives. Uh, the first and probably the most popular is the big lionfish tournament and festival that we have here in May. 
Um, it's the Emerald Coast Open Lionfish Tournament that's associated with the Lionfish Removal and Awareness Day Festival. Um, and during that weekend in May, uh, shoot, tens of thousands of lionfish have been harvested in the past. Um, we're really crossing our fingers that COVID doesn't um, impact the event this year, um, but we're really looking forward to bringing a bunch more lionfish out of the water. So if we have some divers that are tuned in right mm -hmm. now, where can they find more information to be able to sign up for the tournament? And moreover, how can folks who are not going to be diving but would be interested in eating them to help uh, remove this scourge from our local waterways, where could they find out information to find out when restaurants might have this? So the tournament itself, the Emerald Coast Open, has a pre-tournament component to it. That begins February 1st. And what that allows divers to do is go out whenever they want, whenever those weather's good and maybe warm enough for them to go out and harvest lionfish, bring them in and check them in at local checkpoints. We have some in here in Destin, Pensacola, Panama City, really the entire panhandle. But if you want more information about the tournament itself, you can go to the emeraldcoastopen.com. Uh, if you want more information about the festival, where there'll be a bunch of tastings, a bunch of uh, entertainment for the kids and the family, uh, you can go to reefrangers.com. All right, guys, you've heard it here first. We'll put those links along with this video. Check them out. But as always, guys, uh, stay tuned. We've got more on this coming up, but uh, we appreciate you. That's all for today.